Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are going to be looking ahead into the not too distant future, because I want to talk about what to expect from the upcoming chapter 1000. It's a pretty massive milestone for the series, but certainly not the first that many older readers will have experienced. Every time a benchmark number comes out like 700, 800, 900, there's a huge amount of speculation as to what kind of crazy insane events that Oda is going to plan for such a special occasion. However, in reality, this is not always the case. There are some landmark chapters that are very much designed to blow our minds and act like a celebration of the series, but there are also some that aren't particularly special or even important at all. And examining the precedent set thus far is going to give us a very good idea of what to expect from chapter 1000. So we'll start with that and then get into some more context specific stuff for 1000. But before that, it is time to play One Piece or Two Piece, a very simple mini game where the rules are as follows. I am going to place a One Piece character in this here box. It is then your job to guess whether this character will be revealed in One Piece or Two Pieces. And for those of you who guess wrong, well, your punishment will be subscribing to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Very good. And for those of you who do guess correctly, well, Sure, hooray for you. So right now we are going to place Kinemon in the box. Will he be revealed in one piece or two pieces? Make your selection right now, give you a bit of time. Three, two, one. Now let's take Kinemon out of the box and it turns out that he is in one piece, which is a nice change. So for everyone who guessed two pieces, welcome to the Grand Fleet, please enjoy your stay. But let's get into things by going back in time, all the way back to our first truly landmark chapter in the series, which would be chapter 100, and it is entitled The Legend Begins. And this is a very special installment, notable for introducing the character of Dragon. And also by the end of the chapter, the Straw Hats had sailed away from Logtown and were finally making their way towards the Grand Line. Chapter 100 marks the end of the prologue of One Piece, essentially. It was a massive event that signified the beginning of the real adventure. It was planned and it was perfect. Perfect. The exact sort of thing that we would want chapter 1000 to be. This is not always the case though, because our second milestone mark, chapter 200, would be entitled Water Luffy, and nothing special happens here whatsoever. It's basically just a continuation of Luffy vs. Crocodile Round 2, so if fans were expecting something happening back in these early days, then they may have been disappointed. And chapter 300 is a bit of a similar situation. It's called Symphony, and it takes place during the tail end of the Skype era. This chapter is admittedly kind of special though, because it sees NL leave the One Piece planet to go to the moon, and it ends with the Skypiea party, so there is that celebratory nature about it at the very least, so it's not quite as irrelevant as, you know, Water Luffy. With chapter 400, we were given the key to freedom, which takes place during the Anisobi arc, and once again, it's nothing to really write home about. I mean, it is very important in the context of any Sobby because it sees a shift between narrative acts, as this is where the Straw Hats invade the Tower of Justice and start facing off against CP9. Still, it's not quite what we're looking for. However, this is all going to change with chapter 500, which is called the Embers of History, and it is best known for introducing us to one Silver's Ray Lee, a very monumental moment and something that was highly unlikely to be just a coincidental event. So this is the first celebratory chapter that we have been seeking ever since the events of 100. Although sadly, chapter 600 would not continue this trend as it was called the Island of New Beginnings and it may have had the potential to be the very first post time skip chapter, but unfortunately that accolade belongs to chapter 598. It feels like Oda may have been really gunning to have that 600 mark be the very first post time skip chapter, but maybe he just fell a bit short. Oh well. Moving on to chapter 700, this one is actually quite a surprise. It's called His Momentum, and it dumps quite a bit of stuff on us. Firstly, it revealed six of the seven current Warlords of the Sea, but it was also the very first time that we had Fujitora's name dropped into the series by a mostly unseen Fleet Admiral Sakazuki. In addition to this, 700 also told us that Dolphamingo had possession of the Marimaru no Mi, and by the end of it, the Straw Hats had arrived at Dressrosa. So this one is actually pretty big, I mean, nothing hugely earth shattering, but quite a lot to digest and a pretty great celebration of all that is One Piece. Meanwhile, chapter 800 is also pretty big because it is called Sun's Cups and it saw the formation of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Sadly, this was not the last chapter of Dress Rosa though, that would be 801, which was given that honor, but this is still pretty huge stuff. The Grand Fleet forming is more or less the equivalent of having a new crew member, maybe, it depends how you look at it. But now our final landmark chapter to this point would be chapter 900 titled Bad and Musical. And it's a pretty special chapter for its own special reasons. You know, Big Mom eats the cake and the whole thing is presented like a twist 
twisted perspective on Hawkeye Island that sees the Big Mom Pirates as the protagonist and ultimately ends with the implied destruction of the Thousand Sunny. It was very unlike anything we'd seen before in One Piece, but probably not the experience that many would have been looking for in such a milestone number. Which of course brings us to chapter 1000. And going through that journey gives us a potentially decent idea of exactly what to expect. I have to be perfectly honest though, the only two chapters I really consider relevant are chapter 100 and chapter 500. You can probably make an argument for 800, but the other two were really the only ones that hit with that solid milestone magnitude. Which does bode very well for us because we are coming up on another 500 chapter interval right now. And I guess we will begin with the thing that both 100 and 500 had in common as a celebration, which was the introduction of a new and monumentous character. So that is one option for chapter 1000, the revelation of some sort of shadow figure, someone incredibly important like, I don't know, say the fabled Scopa Gaban, or perhaps even our first full shot of Mr. Rocks himself, something along those lines. However, with that, we also need to consider the context of the Wano arc. Chapter 100 took place very much at the end of an arc, while 500 was more or less at the beginning. With Wano, we are kind of smack bang in the middle portion right now, so I don't know how much that leaves us open to a new character with that sort of magnitude, with one exception. That being, in fact, three of Wano ends prior to chapter 100. 1000. The idea being that then 1000 would place us in an interlude where anything can happen. So that's how a new character could come forward, either in the modern day or via a flashback. And that could of course include other legendary figures that we have yet to see, such as Ryukugyu, Dr. Vegapunk, etc. Although I think those two in particular might be a bit more of a dream. With an interlude though, there is also a lot of potential to catch up with the world at large. So we might finally have some information regarding what happened to Sabo, Bella Hancock and Vivi, because Oda did write a jump fest a message regarding 2020 that included all three of those names. So perhaps that's what he would have been referring to and planning before One Piece experienced a few more, you know, delays than usual thanks to global events. Having brought up all of this though, I should also acknowledge the idea that chapter 1000 may mark the end of act three of Wano, which in and of itself might not be the celebration that fans are looking for, but it would be a pretty landmark spot for Wano. And sometimes that's just how these things go. If nothing else, going through all of these landmark chapter numbers has taught me that Oda is not willing to sacrifice his storytelling for the sake of meeting a cool number. Otherwise, I think 600 definitely would have been the start of post time skip One Piece, but Oda felt it was right to end pre time skip at chapter 597, just on the precipice of a cool number, so that's how things worked out. If anything, right now, I'd say things are looking far more like a chapter 400 style of situation, placing us in a spot where the main drama of the arc has concluded and the real action begins with Straw Hat and their allies settling into matchups. In any case, we'll probably have a much, much better idea once we get to the 998, 999 mark, but do be prepared for the very real possibility of not quite having your expectations met with chapter 1000. With that said, let's continue building our expectations for what will undoubtedly be the best chapter in the entire series, chapter 1000. And there's a fair few ideas that I've seen thrown around the fan base, one of which would be a new crew member. And to this I say, probably not. It's a nice idea to celebrate the 1000th installment with an official new crew member, but it doesn't quite fit with what's happening on Wano right now. There's just not a lot of room for Luffy to up and say, hey, join my crew in the middle of the big action climax. With that said, I would be more than happy for Oda to prove me wrong on that. It just feels very unlikely. And another idea I see floated around a lot is that chapter 1000 will see the introduction of a new gear, which honestly, I suppose I see it more likely than someone joining the crew. And it's not too difficult of a thought to consider either. Ever since the introduction of Gear 4th, people have endlessly, and I mean endlessly, speculated about Gear 5th, just assuming that it has to happen at some stage because reasons, and maybe it will. Luffy does have a new combination of fun things to play with in regards to both Future Sight and Advanced Armament Haki, so perhaps during his training prior to the raid, he could have developed a new gear, although it may not be Gear 5th, but perhaps just a new edition of Gear 4th. Let's say Gear 4th, Dragon Man, or something. Or Gear 4th, Dragon Slayer. Yeah, much better. It would be pretty hype, but if that were to happen, I also suspect it would probably be deeper into Act 4, rather than the end of Act 3 or the start of Act 4. But that's just going by prior gear revelations. Although with that said, the revelation of Gear Second kind of spits in the face of all of that because in any slobby that was revealed late into Act 3. So sure, bring on a new gear, maybe. But for our next idea, this is, well, it's a bit of a downer, but I do want to flag the potential of an important death in chapter 1000. And I'm not going to go too deeply into it because I have talked about it to death elsewhere, but we have some very real potential for tragedy on Wano. And a milestone chapter doesn't necessarily need to be a positive one. As shown by chapter 900, which was such a morbid, but kind of cool experience. 
And you know, if we were looking for something to just stand out, then this would be another pretty good option. However, a great alternative to death would be a revelation of life perhaps. And with this, I will always, always, always be hinting towards a certain Toki. I think it would be quite a profound experience to find Toki appearing at the end of chapter 1000, having traveled into the future to witness the events that she may or may not have been seeking. And in that way, it's not just one specific either because Toki broadly connects to just about everything in One Piece, considering that she did indeed live in the void century. And here is a really shitty, cheesy, never to be repeated example. But just imagine we see a panel of her looking on and she says something like, so this is what you were waiting for, Joy Boy. But also not because that doesn't really make sense. It might make sense if it were the final war, but maybe not so much Wano. Whatever the case, there is a fairly infinite pool of ideas for chapter 1000, and please do check out the Grand Line Review community section because I have a question up right now asking for your chapter 1000 predictions, mainly so that I can make another video with the combined knowledge of the Grand Fleet. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.